Hello, beautiful friend. It's me, Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and teacher over at robinhallett.com. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'd like to talk about boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, one of my favorite topics and one of my most difficult challenges on my own personal journey. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, where to begin? I could talk about this probably for 89 videos and feel like I haven't covered everything I want to say to you. So I have a saying, set a boundary, save a life. And I love that. Early on, um, when I started on my own healing journey, seeing my healer and working on stuff, um, I would often say, to um, my healer at the time, you know, I'd rather like cut off my own leg with a hacksaw than have to say no to this person. It felt like such a visceral thing. And um, I was really blown away that I actually could identify the feeling for once that I felt so guilty and so worried about what the other person was going to say or how they're going to feel if I turn them down or say no or don't show up for them. Um, it, it literally felt like I was going to be killed. And so that's where the saying set a boundary, save a life came from because it felt that dire to me that I love how the sirens are now going off outside as I'm talking about saving your life. But um, it felt that dire to me to save my own life, you know, to save the only life I could save. Um, to do the only thing I could do. I had to set a boundary. And that's part of a Mary Oliver quote as well. Um, it was that hard. You know, I grew up in a very, very codependent, alcoholic, crazy um, home environment. And I had a dad who was bipolar and, you know, a mom who was a complete narcissist. And you know what? They were awesome in their own way. I'm not saying that to be like, boo-hoo, woe is me, poor me. I'm saying, you know what? I was trained well to take care of everybody else's needs and kiss everyone's butt and to make myself last. I learned how to do that. I was taught not to ever think of my own needs first. And the minute I would, I would be told I was selfish and I would be made to feel guilty. Um, you know, I just so, so many countless memories of just honestly trying to put myself first, wanting to, to, um, you know, meet my own needs or have my needs met or ask and to be made to feel ashamed for little things like, could I have a, another, um, I remember pork chop at the dinner table when I was really little and my stepdad was like, pork, you should be happy we have one pork chop to share um, when I was your age, you know, all that kind of stuff. So like I just learned from a very early age not to have any needs, not to ask for my needs and to keep the crazy, angry, um, alcoholic, weirdo people in my life happy because it's just freaking easier if the people that are already sort of unstable are happy with you. Can you relate to that? It's like, whatever I do, I'm going to keep you from getting upset with me. So set a boundary, save a life is really important. The thing I know about you is that you have a sliver of the universe that's all your own. There is something here on the planet that you want to do. Some energy you want to share with the world. And you know what? I talk about this a lot on my blog. You need to name it and claim it. And when I say claim it, I am talking about setting boundaries. All of our actions are like mini prayers, mini manifestation um, intentions. So when we don't honor our light and our spark and our interest and our passion and our delight, when we don't honor that because we're taking care of the needs of someone else. We're too afraid to say no or set a boundary. Guess what we're doing unconsciously with our energy? We're praying for that kind of thing. It's almost like we're saying, I value this. I value um, 
this experience of draining my batteries out, exhausting myself, talking to this person I don't want to be talking to right now. You know, and I know you don't mean it, and I know I don't mean it when it happens to me, but that doesn't change the fact that we're giving our energy something we're not interested in. So, um, mm -hmm. it's a very important point. You know, boundaries are an inside job. I know a lot of us get mad at the people in our lives who are so needy and pushy and oblivious, like they don't have a freaking clue how much is too much. But you know what? We're the ones. We're the ones that need to set the boundary. I mean, that's like getting mad at a wave for crashing on a beach when you want didn't put up the wave breaker, you know? You're the wave breaker. You need to have a strong and healthy boundary. And, you know, along those lines, then I guess you need a strong sense of you matter. You're sacred. You're beautiful. You're holy. You're a child of God. You get to say no to people and it's okay. It's all right. So um, I learned how to say no on, you know, one, one was my dad, my lovely, amazing hippie, you know, kind of cool wackadoodly dad who was also happened to be bipolar and um he passed away in 2006 which is why i don't feel very chicken talking about my dad on youtube but there you have it um but he would call me and he would go on and on and on and on and on the phone like 45 50 minutes 60 minutes sometimes the phone would ring and my husband jeff He'd be like, do you want me to take this one? You know, it just got to the point and he would just talk and talk and talk. And sometimes he would sound very manic. So he would be really excited. And all it, it was like all we were was a gigantic ear for him. You know, he never asked how we were. Um, he never wanted to know anything. And it was so frustrating. Sometimes I would... Uh, you know, put, I'm not proud of this, but I would put the phone down and just walk away for 10 minutes and come back and he would still be talking. So frustrating. And, um, so he was one of the first people that re made me realize like as an adult, how much I was suffering, trying to take care of him and keep him happy with me and not piss him off, you know? Um, and I started to, tell myself I need to set a boundary I know it feels like again I'm I rather cut off my own leg than have to say no to risk somebody being mad at me but I needed to do it and I started when the phone would ring I'd start to say Robin do you have energy to talk to your dad today yes or no if it was a no I did not answer the phone as hard as that was and as guilty you know the guilt comes up um, I've talked about our ego a little bit in the last blog post I wrote but um, you know the voices come but it's like can we be that wave breaker as the wave is crashing can we do it so I learned with him and I would ask if it was a yes yes you answer the phone and talk to your dad I'd be like how many minutes do you want to talk to him today and I would get an answer seven minutes and I could show up fully and shine and love my dad and let him go on and then kind of be like hey dad good to talk to you i've got seven minutes before i have to before i have to hang up you know so i learned there and then i learned very uh very the hard way how do you say very much the hard way with some of my clients early on who really um you know in their sincerity they weren't trying to be mean to me or trying to um hurt me or upset me, but in their sincere longing to be seen and witnessed and welcomed and loved and to heal. And the kind of connection you can have with your healer is so profound that it's sort of like you want to gobble them up 24 seven. And I had in the beginning a hard time resisting being gobbled up, feeling like I needed to attend to them. And I, I started to figure out that this wasn't good for me because guess what? I began to suffer and the suffering always points back to 
there's an internal boundary that is not being honored. Does that make sense? It's like if you don't feel good about something, you're not honoring yourself. So something has to change. And my number one tip to you around that, if you see clients like I do, is set some policies. I always say to myself, and I learned this from Jeff, number one husband, Jeffrey Hallett, what's the policy on this, Robin? What's your policy around that? He always asks me and I'm like, you know, like I have a declaration uh, articles written for my corporation of one. But he's right, so I made a policy, like, you know what? If you're super late to your session, I can't make up the time for you just because I'm worried you're gonna be mad at me. My policy is that I honor myself, and I tell you that ahead of time, you know? It, don't be late. I can't extend the time. Um, around payment, boy, so many people would be like, oh, I don't have my checkbook today. Um, and it still happens from time to time that somebody won't have exact change or they'll forget their checkbook. But back then I felt it was so intense. I would just feel like, I guess I just have to let it go. You know, I guess I won't get paid today. I mean, I didn't even know how to speak up and say, mm, you need to pay me, you know? Um, there was a drunk person who showed up for a session that I should have said, like what is going on anyway but um just lots of little wackadoodly things where i really learned when you're suffering a boundary is being crossed here that needs to be honored what is the policy what do you want to do so i know a lot of you have um aging parents elderly parents elderly family members maybe a great aunt somewhere that relies on you and counts on you Maybe you have an ornery father who is quite demanding and uh, pretty obstinate or a mother-in-law who um, is just really challenging to love because she takes care of you financially, but at the same time, you know, there's a high price that you're paying for that. So this is what I want to say. You still have a right to know how you feel in the privacy of your own mind. To just take a moment and really assess where are you at honestly with this? Where are you at for real with this issue? Be honest with yourself. Remember, energy and intention matter. So when you put a smile on your face and act like it doesn't matter to you when it does, when you're angry or you're resentful or a little bit um, frustrated or exasperated, look, that's not good. So stop, be honest with yourself, get really clear. What is it? What's going on here, kiddo? Talk to yourself. And then here's my best tip because, you know, I know these are people you can't X out of your life. That's nuts. You can't just cut people out that are related to you or, you know, rely on you. They're elderly and they can't. So here's my thing. What about doing the minimum to express the maximum? Um, and yes, I got that from the TJ Maxx commercial. <laughs> you get the max for the minimum um, at TJ Maxx. Don't ask me to sing it, but it's like you do love these people, right? You do care and you have memories and connections and you want, you enjoy being of service and you want to be of service and you want, you know, you want that connection that does matter to you, right? So the thing is, you know, it's like me deciding I only have seven minutes for my dad. I can show up fully. That is doing the, the a minimum, but expressing my maximum. You know, to really be in my heart and give my full attention. So that's what you can do. You can think, you know, next time something going on, you know, with an adult family member or a sibling, you can just get clear. Robin, what's what can you do from a genuine place that feels good, but also honors your own boundaries? Because... We can't wait for other people to honor boundaries for us. Like I said, that's nutty. That's like a, asking a wave to not crash on the beach. Mm -mm, not going to happen. you got to be the wave breaker. you got to be it. So the last one I wanted to mention, um, 
and then I better hop off because I'm probably going on a long time, is friends who exhaust you and exasperate you and same old song and dance kind of friends. You know, I once went out to lunch with somebody like that uh, and I got so drained in the conversation. Um, she was such a downer and so um, the complaining, OMG, I mean, this is probably 12 years ago and I still remember it. I was so wiped out, so exhausted, so drained by the end of that, that lunch. I literally could not remember where I parked my car. That was like, wow, Robin, you are totally spun out, you know, exhausted, wiped out. That is wild. You don't even remember where you parked. I was that like spent. So you, you usually figure those people out once or twice. You know, you have an experience like I'm describing to you and then it's time to get to work. You know, it's not your job to say, hey, so-and-so, you're extremely draining and tiring and you're a pain in my butt and, you know, you're a Debbie Downer or you're always, that's not what I'm talking about. You need to know for yourself and draw the line in any way that feels good to you. You know, often honesty, uh, you know, I'm known as a truth teller. I can tell you with certainty I have made the mistake of saying to people, you're really exhausting. You're really draining. <laughs> you know, that's like the dumbest thing I ever could have done. It's true, but they're not the ones that need to hear it, right? I'm the one that needs to hear it. I'm the one that needs to hear that. Robin, you're allowing yourself to be drained dry by this person. Sweetie, you need to move on. So this is the thing, you know, again, some people in your life are really difficult to say no to. Again, minimum, maximum. Text them back. Tell them you're busy. Tell them you wish it could be different. Tell them right now it's just not in the cards. Um, you don't have to make up stories and you also don't have to hit them over the head with the hammer of truth. But you still get to honor you because you are number one. You are the most important one in your life. You. Not even your kids come first. You. You. That tank needs to be full maximum juju. Full maximum. Because you have something important to do in the world. And caretaking everyone else and being a patient listener and um, letting them dump all their stuff inside your boundary that's not your purpose in life that is not your purpose in life so i'll leave you with one final thought you know set a boundary save a life you know who else's life it saves that other person when you don't continue to kiss their butt for lack of a better way of saying it when you don't continue to allow yourself to go over and beyond what you're you're supposed to be doing you teach them something too you know you teach them with your actions and with your energy that that's not an appropriate thing to ask of another person that's powerful that's being a true teacher in that moment by by saying no with kindness you know i think all of this can be done with kindness but by saying no, you're teaching them. When you put a limit on, you know, when I started, you know, when I started giving my dad a limit, guess what? We started having more of a relationship. So your needs matter. And I had a little, I had a little pad of paper here, but um, to tell you more things, but I think I'll cut it for here. And uh, if I can help you with this, come over. This is going to be a blog post on my blog, so come over. It's robinhallett.com and uh, let me know what your, what your issue is or your question or what you've learned on your own journey because I know you're on one too and I know you've figured a lot of good things out. So um, I hope this was helpful and just know that I believe in you and I see, I do see that you have a purpose um, in this world and it's not just to wipe snotty noses and uh, pick up groceries and 
listen to crazy people go on and on till you can't find your your car in the parking lot anymore i know you're meant for something more and i want to help you get there you know i want to help you really stay on your mission all right i am signing off this is robin hallett teacher and healer over at robinhallett.com rock it like you mean it you're beautiful ciao ciao Uh oh, and now I do want to sign off, but I can't find the button. <laughs> Bye.